Oh, hello there. I wonder what's suspiciously already open on my laptop today. Oh, hey, look, it's Appa from my favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie. My name is Ong, and I'm the Avatar. Hey, that gives me an idea. Today, let's make a baby flying bison from Avatar The Last Airbender and then teach him how to sit. Good boy. Ow. ow. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is make an armature out of aluminum foil and wire. It's very important that you take time and measure carefully, which I'm doing by roughly eyeballing it and cutting it off as I go along. And I'm shaping this into sort of a perfectly balanced tail section. Perfectly balanced is all things should be. Oh, so wrap your chicken leg in tin foil until it looks like a chicken leg and uh, lament the fact that it looks like a chicken leg. Wow, it looks great. So I'm cutting off more armature wire and I'm sticking it through the body to act as the support for the legs, which turned out to be a very dodgy method, but uh, d whoops! I guess I bumped the camera and it's all covered in foil now. Fantastic. Let's add some clay by rolling it out because I don't have a pasta maker and just adding it on. Just what? Just what? Putting on as much clay as you need to cover all of the tin foil with as little clay as possible because the tin foil armature looks absolutely awful and I wanted to throw it in the trash so many don't look at it. Don't look at it. Can I borrow this? Ah, oh, thank you. This is Super Sculpey Medium, by the way, which turned out to be really hard. I don't know why. Fat clay. Maybe it was just an old pack. So I just covered everything over with clay until I couldn't see my past mistakes anymore, which I think is a good life lesson. Just cover over your mistakes and uh, pretend they didn't exist in the first place and you'll be fine. Now, if you stop here, you can pretend you've sculpted a monster from the forest. Okay. Oh, that's gross. That's pretty gross. It's not great. <laughs> now here's a cheeky foot strat. Cut off the ends of your legs and then roll out a ball Place it down very gently and just grab a ball stylus and... Perfect feet every time. Squishing the feet on and I'm kind of roughly blending them out with the rest of the leg. This doesn't need to be very perfect because I'm going to cover it up with fur anyway. Hey, that groin region is looking way too flat. Let's bulk it out a bit. Ah, bulgy. Wow. <laughs> so let's make some more cheeky fur bracelets, wrap them around each leg, and then I blend in the top part with the leg. The rest of the fur gets cut up into smaller tips, and then for lack of having a cat of my own, I'll go in with various tools and scratch it all up until it looks a little more furry. Mm. And it's just a matter of repeating that for every foot, around every leg. This clay though, I swear, this is supposed to be medium, I can't even, that's just rock. Hey, while I'm sitting there scratching away at the fur, this is a good time to ask, what should I put on my walls? around me and in front of me. This is a bit barren looking, isn't it? Got any ideas? I don't I don't know. What what would fit? You got any suggestions? Leave it in the comments below. So, getting some more clay and uh, rolling it out and slapping it flat, I needed to make the belly part. I'm really impressed actually with how well this clay sticks to itself. So, I'm cutting it out into a more refined shape and I'm just Putting it on and blending the edges out so it looks like a nice, soft belly. Satisfying. Oh. And tacking on a tiny tongue for the tail. Then I poke a hole in the neck area and add a wooden skewer for the head. And everything is done. Time to bake it. Actually, no. We need more belly. He's looking a little bit thin and I want this to look like a kind of baby version because I find the baby versions very adorable. So I'm adding a little bit more mass and I'm smoothing it out. Then I'm going in with another tool and it's starting to look a little crummy. Let me just fix that real quick. Hey, yep. Smoothing them out with some silicone tips. Hey, here's a hot tip. If you get sick of rolling out clay, just get an app to do it for you. Don't tell nobody about it though. <laughs> 
Nice. Ooh, here's my proprietary tinfoil dispenser. It's patent pending, but you can use the concept if you want. Yeah. It's perfect. Next, let's get cracking on the head. That's a pretty good head shape. I add a skewer to the head and fit it onto the body to make sure that the proportions are good and positioning feels natural. And I think Appa so far is approving greatly. Ooh, another top tip. Wrap a rock in foil and add a skewer on top. I hope all these tips don't make your head spin. This is not a necessary step. It's just something to hold your head while you're working on it. Next, I'm sculpting out the jowls and attaching them to the front of the face, which is determined by the best looking part of the very lumpy ball. Very lumpy. Then I'm squishing out a nose and cutting it in half to get a flat back, adding some bacon bond or oven bake adhesive, tucking in the edges to make it look nice and smooth. This bison ain't flying just yet, but that's because he can't hear the yip yips, so we need to add some ears. I'm folding up clay like so and squishing it onto the side of the head with a silicone tip tool. To get a better sense for the proportions, I'm just roughing out the eye areas and squishing in a temporary ball. Then I decided to give him a bowl cut. This is Appa on his first day in school, <laughs> for ready for his school picture. It looked awful. I tried giving him a, a fringe, but it didn't help at all. I ended up just cutting the top of the head off and bulking it out with more aluminum foil. But in the end, I added another wig on top. I'm cutting out pie slices here because I had the brilliant idea of adding the initial pie on top and then using all of the excess bits in reverse as extra fringe. It turned out okay in the end, but it took a lot of scratching and pushing and squishing and blending. I took a, it took hours. In hindsight, maybe not the best idea, but hey, we're sticking with it. We're learning as we go. Moving on, we need to decapitate him slightly to fit the head on the shoulders. Ta-da! Oh no, don't look at the back, it's bad! No! Okay, we need to cover that up. Now, for the hand feet, he is supposed to have fingers more so, but I just went ahead and pre-baked these teardrop shapes that I could squish into the paws because at this point I had spent so long on the sculpture already that I kind of wanted to get it done in a reasonable amount of time, so I went the lazy route. But it turned out okay. Let's pretend that because he's a baby, uh, he doesn't have fully formed fingers yet. These are his baby fingers, okay? They'll fall off when he gets older and then his, his adult fingers will grow in. Squishing in some pre-baked eyeballs with some bacon bond and calling that done? I did go in and add some clasicles in choice places for that added furriness and to break up the silhouette a bit. Then I brought out my secret weapon. It's this half sphere of indentations of fur that I made for my Totoro sculpt that I can then adhere to a ball stylus and just sort of roll gently across the surface where I can access it to get a wide cover of random fur textures that also kind of looks like it's layering on top of itself due to the fact that I'm pressing in over already indented clay. Kind of like a displacement map to use my 3D heritage. Last step is to slap on a lot of clay softener to get rid of those crummy crumbs all over, and I don't actually have clay softener, so I just use nail polish remover, which has similar effects with the added benefit of giving you a headache. <laughs> Top tip for doing this step is to do it in a well-ventilated room and not in a small office space with a closed door for air conditioning purposes. It did work out though, and it did turn out a fairly smooth model in the end. I did go in and also add a couple of dots to the nose for that added texture and gave it a quick brush and that would call him done. Except for the horns. And he's baked and primed in a white coat. He always had horns. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to be using folk art matte acrylics. Let's mix together some ketchup and mustard and add some egg white for a nice balanced breakfast. 
then just to slather it on the entire model fairly sloppily. We're gonna cover up the rest with other colors anyway, so just get it everywhere. Just, just go nuts. Just have fun. Now we need to get a bit more delicate. So I mixed up a fairly light brown for the face, and then I darkened that brown down with some black for the tummy portion. Then I darkened that brown down even more for the feet, because Appa is just... I would estimate it's just somewhere between 49 to 51 shades of brown. Careful, stick within the lines. Let's give him a bib for baby, so we don't get any of that chocolate sauce on the baby beard. After I painted the whole model with various shades of browns and tans, I'm going in with an off-white brown tan for the dry brushing, which is just a very small amount of paint on the brush and lightly dusting it all over the surfaces to get the highlights to really pop. It's a surgery of brown. Oh, careful. Don't get it in your eyes. Then I'm preemptively going in with my homemade wash, which is... This wash is a mix of one part paint to hella parts water with just a dab of dish soap to improve the flow. And it's turning out decent. I think it's... There's too many bubbles though. What? How do I get rid of the bubbles? Help. Uh, the bubbles! Sorry, I'm just gonna... Bubble patrol. Then I realized I hadn't added the arrow, so I went in and added the arrow and his back... Happy... Trail? Do they grow like this, or do they dye their hair to match the... Do, they, do the airbenders get tattoos to match the flying bisons? What came first, the flying bison or the airbender? Oh, oh. wait. Then I quickly went back in and dry brushed that brown and added just some dots of wash to places where I thought it needed a little bit of a touch up. And the last cherry on the eyeball was the glint on top. That's done. Ha, we did it. That took forever! He's huge, but I think he turned out okay. Yeah, it's a big project, but I'm fairly happy with it. Apologies for the lighting being all over the place in this video. I purchased new lighting during the filming process, so it, I had to make do at the start and then it shifted and... Uh, well, anyway. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and this format. I hope to make more, and if you did, I mean, you know, the YouTube thing. Do Subscribe and like, maybe. Or don't. That's okay, too. I'm a newbie at this, but uh, I'm happy to learn and get tips and tricks. So uh, feel free to, to tell me tell me how to improve my, my bubbly home wash. <laughs> and, and until next time, take care. Yep, yep.